Hi, today I'm going to share with you um, one section of this book by Cynthia Ryland about a very special migratory animal. The book is The Journey, Stories of Migration. And we're actually going to look at the section on the Arctic Tern, which is a type of bird. Of all migrations, probably the journey of birds is best known to people. Each fall, traveling south, thousands of birds fly over towns and countrysides, and nearly everyone notices. But, incredible as it may seem, there was a time when people did not know that some birds migrate. Hundreds of years ago, when certain birds disappeared in the winter, some people thought the birds had simply gone inside holes somewhere to sleep until spring. Others thought the missing birds had actually changed into different birds for the winter. But there were some who believed that the birds had traveled far away in winter and that those same birds would return again in spring. And these people were right. Notice the wingspan of the Arctic Tern and the ocean. But they would probably never have believed the story of the little Arctic Tern. For of all the birds that migrate, none breaks the records like this one. It flies farther than any other bird and, in fact, covers more migrating miles than any other creature on the earth. Because every year, this small bird flies all the way from the North Pole to the South Pole and back again, a total of 25,000 miles each year. It is an astonishing, which means amazing accomplishment, and to do it, the Arctic Tern must live most of its life always in the air. The Arctic Tern spends its summers near the North Pole. And here the females and males mate, nesting near small streams. When their chicks hatch, the Tern parents fish all day long to feed themselves and their babies. They have to eat as much as they can, for soon they are going to fly 12,000 miles nonstop, which is half of their migration. In the fall, the little terns set out flying south. Behind them, the winter winds will soon be howling and the Arctic snow piling up many feet high. It is good these tiny birds have escaped. They are amazingly strong. They fly over dark forests, tropical islands, endless oceans, and they rarely land, which means they almost never land. They dip into waters to fish, and then they eat in the air. How can they endure, put up with eight months of flying when there's only 12 months in a year? And how do they know which way to go? As with other migrating creatures, there are many theories about how birds navigate. That's, you know, following their directions, but no one really knows for sure. The small terns will fly and fly through winter, through spring, until finally in summer, they will reach Antarctica near the South Pole. 
summer here is still too cold for most animals, but for the Arctic terns, it is perfect. Here, they will rest. And will they eat? Yet, fall or autumn comes quickly, and the wind is growing colder. In winter, the temperature in Antarctica can be 100 degrees below zero. This is no place for a little bird to stay. So, the terns, fattened from eating, strength regained, will lift up their wings and fly all the way back to the North Pole. It will take them another eight months, but they will travel on to survive, to live, and after a short rest, they will make the whole trip all over again. So they are the creature on our planet that migrates the farthest. So every year, round trip is 25,000 miles. And I would love to finish with a conclusion um, written by Cynthia Ryland, the author, and I will also try and get this on a slide for you as well. One of the most wonderful mysteries on this earth is the migration of its creatures, that they understand when to travel and where to go and how to get there is one of the planet's marvels. Tiny birds, great whales, fragile, delicate butterflies, persistent, stubborn eels, humming locusts, which are like grasshoppers, and brave caribou. These are all miracles in motion, travelers on a remarkable road. Thank you for listening.